Hey guys, it's May May and it's part two of our 12 by 12 paper pack into as many cards and tags and other things as we can. And today we're going to do something with some pre-made card bases. Now my friend Christopher has these card bases that he uses. He is a six by six card maker and he sent me these a while ago. I think he may still have these in his store. If he does, I'll link them, but I'm not sure. But I love the idea of some six by sixes. Now the reason I wanted to use a six by six for today's project is because these bigger stamps, I, these bigger stickers, I mean, I think they would look really good on these bigger cards. Cards. Can you see how large he is compared to this card? Now it will work on a regular A2 size card, but I kind of thought I could maybe mix the reindeer and the Santa and the tree and the snowman together and maybe mix some other images with some of the other pieces and utilize some of these stickers. So we're going to work with sticker sheets today. We're also going to work with this paper again. Now here's the other cool thing about using six by six card bases. You can get four card mats from each 12 by 12 sheet. You'll just have a tiny little sliver left over on each side. So I'm going to look through this paper and see if there's any I think can be kind of universally used. I think this would be so cute with that snowman and the Christmas tree sticker. So I'm going to put that one aside to use. And then I'm going to keep looking and see what we got. So I've kind of narrowed some down to this plaid, this snowflake, and this snowflake. I think this will work really well with the stickers and what I'm trying to do. I'm going to start first with this snowflake here. Now here's the thing. I'm not going to be able to make more than one of these because I only have one sticker to make the card with. So I can be really specific in my design on this one. So this is where we're going to get into more time consuming uh, card making because we're going to get more detailed about this card. So I know I want to use this. I know I want to use these two guys, this one and this one. I just think they're cute together. And I'm going to do something because I think this will help me. I'm going to cut these guys away from this sticker sheet just because I want to lay them around on the page. Now you could peel them off of here, maybe stick them onto some acetate or something like that just to hold them for you so you can look at them. But I think this is going to work just fine. I plan to use as much of this as I can anyway. So cutting it away won't be a big deal. I probably should cut the whole thing apart as I go. So here I've cut my snowman and I've got my Christmas tree and I just think he'd be really cute here with the Christmas tree or beside the Christmas tree and then have these snowflakes in the background like the the sky but then I think I want to do a little snowbank here. So I'm going to just take some regular white paper and cut myself a snowbank. So I've cut myself a snowbank and now I'm going to cut this for my mat. This is going to be five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Still leaves me lots of scraps for lots of things. So don't worry about these scraps. We will use these. I may even use this on the card, so I'm going to keep it close. I don't know. We might use it. All right, so let's see what we're looking like and see if we want to add anything. So I cut my little mat piece, and actually I made an accident, but I'm going to go with it. I cut this piece at five and a quarter by five and a quarter instead of five and three quarters by five and three quarters. My standard is to just leave like an eighth of an inch all the way around, but I'm okay with this border. I'm not going to stress over that because I would rather use it than waste it. So this is the layout of the card, the mat and the card. I've cut myself these snow banks and they're solid white so they're really hard to see, but we're going to fix that in the end because I'm going to play with that glitter again. But for now, that's where those are going to live and we're going to start assembling the card. The first thing I want to do is check the opening and make sure, all right, so I'm going to have it open this way, lay that there. Then I'm going to glue down this mat. So I'm just going to center it on the card as best I can, I'm not going to stress too much. Just get it as best as I can, just like that. And then I'm going to put this snow bank down. This is my tallest bank, and it's going to live in this area here. Then I'm going to take this tree, and I'm going to kind of lay it in underneath and have it in a location of the page where the tree is on my snowflake mat and underneath the snow bank. Okay, so that's where I want it to live. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to peel it off of its backer. This is so easy with the stickers, y'all. So easy. Put my little snow bank back real quick. I know it's going to go right here. And I'm just tucking it under that snow bank for now. And I'm just going to stick it down into place. Look how cute already, right? Now my snowman needs a home. And I want him to be beside the tree. So I'm going to peel him off. Now I may stick him straight down and I may not. I may pop him up a little bit. Um, I don't know. He's cute right there in front of the tree, isn't he? I think I'm going to put him right there. Just going to stick him down, and he'll be in front of the tree and 
All right, see my mistake? I meant to put him behind. Don't fret. I'm going to peel this off. Now I'm going to stick him behind. So we're good. Don't fret about stuff. If you make little mistakes, you can fix it. So I peeled this off. And so now he's behind the snowbank and they're living there. How cute are they? Now I'm going to put the snowbanks down. I'm going to use foam tape for that. So I got out some of these little guys. I'm going to flip this over and using my pick tool, I'm going to pick these guys up and put some of this foam on my snowbank on the back. I like these um, foam squares for this especially because they're, they're very thin foam squares. This means I can put dimension on both of these guys and my card still won't be very thick, which I like. All right, so the first snowbank can go down and I'm lining it up with that matte piece so that I'm hiding those snowflakes behind it. And then my second snowbank can go down. So I'll put some more squares on it and put it in place. And then this one's gonna go right on top of that one. And I'll have a double layer snowbank, which is really cute. So I held on to some of my black um, scraps left over from making all those mats earlier. And I found this sticker on the sticker pack that says Noel, and I think it is super cute. I'm gonna stick this down to that black, and then I'm gonna trim it out. I'm just going to kind of eyeball the distance between it about an eighth of an inch, roughly. Just do a little trim. So I'm going to take this little guy and let it live right up here, kind of on and off the mat. And say Noel for me. How cute, right? Back to my Merry Christmas stamp set, which I love so much. I told you I'll probably use that single stamp set in every one of these cards. This one is from Celebrate the Season. I'm going to stamp inside of here, Merry Christmas. Just like so, I think that'll be good. So now the inside of the card is stamped, the outside of the card is built, but I'm gonna go ahead and glitter this one. Since I'm making this set of cards, these six by six cards kind of um, one at a time, I'm gonna go ahead and have it ready and let it sit aside and dry. I'm using the same three colors I've been using, the green, red, and white. And I'm gonna take some of the green glitter and go to this tree and put some little dots on the tree in green. Then I'm gonna go back and put some in red. I think that'll be cute. Like ornaments, like little baubles. I had somebody ask me what's the difference in these and stickles. So far, what I can see is this. The um, glitter on this one or the, the glue on this one dries dimensional, where with stickles, it doesn't. With stickles, they flatten out, but whatever dimension you leave this at, it seems to dry at that dimension. So remember when I made that big Rudolph nose on that card yesterday? Let me show you. Well, it was yesterday for me, but um, Wednesday for you guys. See how, like, it's like a bead now. It's It kept its dimension. Can you see that? I hope you can see it. Let me put my hand behind it and see if that makes it show more. But it's like a bead now, so it does not flatten out. And also, the glue in this, the adhesive dries clear, so that's cool too. All right, it's time to pretty up our snowbank so we can really see it. Now, you could totally do this with some distress ink, maybe a blue distress ink or something like that. But since I've been using glitter on my cards, I thought I would keep doing it here. I'm just going to go on the edge of our snowbank and I'm kind of scrubbing the glitter around and it will work just fine. It'll kind of dry in that kind of flattened and dimensional shape at the same time. And I decided before I leave this guy, I'm going to add some red to his hat brim and his scarf. I did that on one that I made earlier and it turned out really cute. So I want to match that here. Now remember, my cards are pretty simple because I'm a pretty simple person, but you could get as detailed as you wanted. You could um, add as many embellishments. You could go crazy with this, but still we're only using one paper pack and some solid white and black cardstock to go with it. So getting lots of things out of that one paper pack. I like that, stretching our money. All right, this one's ready to dry. So on to our next card. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp Merry Christmas in this guy first. So I'm gonna ink up my Merry Christmas because I know that's the sentiment I want in there. And I'm gonna stamp that right here on the inside center. 
So that part is done. I don't need to go back onto the inside anymore. This using pre-made card bases makes things so fast, so fast. I mean, it's not that much trouble to cut a card base, but this makes it go pretty quick. All right, so there is that. Now here's what I've done. I chose this snowflake and this time I cut it the correct size. Last time I left that border, this is the size I like to leave, just a small white border. Then I found some other elements we're gonna use. Definitely these two guys together because I think they're adorable. And remember those strips we cut apart? How cute is this for down here for them to stand on? Now I've got to see if I'm going to need to trim it some more for them to stand on, but let's see. I think he's going to stand there just fine. I think that'll be cute. And we might even put a strip here, um, a little piece of white to show the difference. Let's see what we've got. So I'm going to build my own strip here at the bottom. Okay, so this is the one strip we cut away earlier. This was the piece I wanted to use, but I think it needs something here to show. To make sure that my whites match, because the card base is a little wider than this, I'm going to overlap this guy. So I'm going to trim this out here at the bottom. And then I'm going to glue this together like this. So I will be hiding this page, but that'll be fine because it'll give us a place there for the Santa to stand and it'll be cute. So I'm going to glue this, the Santa and the reindeer, they're going to stand together there. So glue that together. And I'm just going to line up the green with the red stripe at the top. And that way it'll kind of look exactly the same, like it was meant to be that way. I'll let that sit for a minute while I attach this to the front of my card. Then this guy gets glued down to the front. I'm not going to pop this up on dimension because I want the Santa to be stuck to it. And I don't want to put it on dimension either because I want to use the sticker to hold it down. So this is just going to live in this very bottom corner. Now, you notice I covered up a lot of that red snowflake. You certainly don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can cut this off and just match them up on the front like this. But I like a thick card, and I actually think the more we stack the paper, the nicer it feels. So that doesn't bother me. All right, I want to look at where Santa's going to go. Here's something really super cool about these um, stickers. Notice how they have a border around them. So when we're using them on these busy pages like this, they still pop because they're not cut out all the way to the red edge. If this Santa hat had, if we cut that little piece off, he would blend in with our background, and this way he won't. So I'm going to put this guy right here, and I'm going to use that little lip to help me where we glued those together, and put him almost all the way over. So he's going to be right there. I love the stickers that make life easy. And then I'm going to grab this little guy and put him next to him. And I'm just going to line him up on this side beside Santa. And this kind of gives you the illusion in my mind that he's his sleigh is this way, right? And Santa's standing in front of the sleigh. So the last thing I'm going to do is I want to use this little Santa Claus is coming to town tag. Look how cute it is. It is an actual tag. It's shaped like a tag. Let me show you. I'm going to poke this little piece out. So you can see how it is shaped like a little tag. But I think I'm going to put it on a piece of paper so it'll really pop right there. So let me pull out a piece of scrap white. So I took a piece of scrap white paper, stuck it down, trimmed it out, super easy, just like that. And it's gonna go right here. But you know I need something in that hole, right? So I'm gonna take my hole punch and poke a hole in that. And then using some red twine, I'm just gonna run that through the little hole I made. I'm gonna tie it in a knot. Then I'm going to glue this down with some dimensional. So I'm going to take some foam squares and put on the back of this. I really have to now because that twine is making it pop up. So this is a place that I'm going to need to use some dimension. Okay, so I've got all my foam squares on the back. And I'm going to stick this on an angle right like so. And I'm going to do something with this in a second. But for now, I'm going to leave that alone. I want to put 25th down here. I'm going to go back to the stickers and see if I can find that in the stickers. See how we get this little thing of stickers at the bottom? I'm going to use the green and put 25th. So I'm going to use this little sticker, that the backer that's left over from that tag to help me hold these. And I'm going to stick these down here just for a minute. And I'm going to get 25 and TH. So I went on to the uh, sticker sheet and took 25 and TH and stuck it on that piece where I took the tag off to hold it for me. So now I can put this in place. Now I know I want to put the five right underneath 
the middle of December. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to put it about right, let me see, right here. So let's just place that into place and get that one down. Good deal. Then I'm going to put the T next to it. I work from the middle out, kind of like we used to do when we were in typing class. Remember that? So there's the T, and it will line up. These are kind of thick stickers, so I can put it right next to the other one and make it really look cute. So it just kind of made that make sense. December 25th, Santa Claus is coming to town. Cute, right? I think I want to glue this into his hand like he's holding the tag. I think that'll be cute. So I'm going to put a little art glitter glue down, just a little bit. And we'll put that first one in there. And then I'm going to put the other one over it. So I put a couple of dots of glue this time. I'm going to lay it into the bottom dot and the one on top of his hand. And then I'm going to trim off any excess I've got. So just let that sit and dry. I'm actually going to let that dry next to the glitter one and I'll trim it later. But I think it's cute. Let me let you guys see the whole card. Now I'm going to do the same kind of process with the other cards. And I'm just going to film it and play a little music and let you watch me do it. And then we'll get together at the end. So I ended up getting four six by six cards and I'll show you why I stopped. Look how cute these are. I just love how these turned out. I think I love the most that I can really let the white card itself do most of the work because of how well this um, paper pack works with white. I love that. So this one, you can see that I glittered the word joy. It is not dry yet. I just had this sitting aside and I wanted to show you how many I ended up with. Actually, none of these are dry yet. So I'm being very careful. This is the first one you saw me do this one. I made that one with you. And then I think I made, yeah, I made this one with you. I did not glitter this one because I felt like the Baker's Twine didn't really need glitter. I thought that was cute. So there's that one. And then this one, which was my least favorite when I started, but now it's kind of growing on me. I really like how that looks. And um, I just stuck him down to some red paper and stuck this down and then cut him around. But I think he turned out cute. So we ended up getting four six by six cards from just the sticker pack. That's all I really used in some of the paper. And now I'm gonna see what else we can get. So I wanna show you what was left in the stickers so you can see, I've turned this over so it'll make sense. See how I took most of the big ones out and I just have some of these left. These are pretty much too small for six by six cards the way I'm making them. Now you certainly could make this work with six by six cards. You could use them for different elements, but I think these would look better on a card that's an A2, maybe some smaller ones, maybe some tags. We might make some smaller cards. I haven't done those in a while. Those would be fun. And then look at all these stickers left. We only used two out of this so far. 
So, oh wait, oh no, I haven't used that. And we used some of the letters down here at the bottom, just a few of them. So I'm really gonna step outside the box on this one. This is from some packaging. Whenever we get boxes in for the store for items, they'll sometimes be separated by this, which is kind of a soft chipboard. Can you see? It's not extremely thick. You can see it there between my fingers. Not very thick, pretty malleable. And I save it because I'm that person, right? Plus it's craft colored. It's like one of my favorite colors. So I've been holding on to it. Well, I think this will make some really cute tags and they'll be slightly thicker than heavy cardstock and still thinner than chipboard. And I really don't know the size of this guy. Let me measure it real quick. This is right at 12 inches, a little more than 12 inches. So I think I'm gonna cut them down into three inch strips and see how many three inch tags I can get out of one piece. See how thin it is, it cuts real easy. I do use my rotary for this, I don't use my blade for this. Meaning my blade trimmer, I use my rotary trimmer. So now I'm just cutting these in half. Now if you're using standard paper, you're not gonna have this issue, but I'm having to cut mine at four and eight sixteenths because of the length that it is, but that gets me to exactly half of the page. So that way I'm getting two of these guys out of each three inch strip. So that's fine, I don't mind having to do that. But the cool thing, I think one of the reasons I like tag so much is there is no restrictions. There's nothing that says you have to do it this size, you have to do it that size, you can do it any way you want. So I'm gonna take this now, I'm gonna use one of my punches, and this is my angle punch. I'm gonna use the large end and go through and turn these into tags super fast. See how quick that does? I just love that. And it cuts this lightweight chipboard really easy. I like to do my hole a little bit lower because I don't want it to rip out when I put whatever I'm gonna put in it for tying them. So I push that in there pretty far, you can see. You can always put some kind of support or something in there, you know, but if you're just using these for a gift tag, I don't really worry about that too much. Now these guys are ready to decorate. So what I'm gonna do first, before I go back to my paper at all, because remember we had all those strips of scraps that we cut and they weren't just scraps, it was also the page that was the strip page where we could cut them apart. I'm gonna start using these first and just see what I can use up of this. Okay, so I'm taking a break for just a second to show you this because I'm gonna need to cut some more of these little tags. I cut two more here, but I'm gonna need more than that. Remember these guys that I said I wanted to save for a tag? Look how cute this is. I'm gonna pick this one up. And this is one of those tags I made. And look how cute that is. I'll need to punch the hole a little bit better, but I'm going to glue this down to there. And it's just a perfect little tag for a gift. And they're so easy to look so cute. So there's that one, and I'm gonna do the rest of them too. I think this is really cute. Now for these little guys, I'm gonna go back to the sticker set and see where I can add these stickers because I think they're so cute. And I think if this guy will fit, I'm gonna try it. This little candy cane, look how cute that is right there. So super cute on that tag. And let's put this angel with the flowers. Let's see if it'll fit. If it won't fit, I'll put it somewhere else. It's perfect there. I just love that. Look how cute. Then this gingerbread man I want to put with these ornaments because I think he's adorable. Look at that. And then Santa can have, what can Santa have? Holly Jolly? Will that fit on there? Let me see. I may be pushing it. Nope, it fits. Because he's a Holly Jolly. Santa, oh my goodness guys, that is so easy, so cute. Now I'm gonna stamp on these guys. Oh, but first we have to do, we have to do white stitching. It's screaming for it, right? It needed the white stitching, isn't that adorable? So there's that one. I'm gonna continue doing all of these with the white stitches. 
and it's time for you to decide just how fancy you want everything. Now I'm going to stamp on the back sides of these and I'll do one with you so you don't have to watch them all because I know these videos are getting very long. And I just think you could keep going until every scrap of that paper is gone and make as many tags and cards as you would like. I think I'm going to stop the video here or, you know, at, this is going to be the last projects we make out of it, except for what we're going to do tomorrow, which is the little game, the little present for someone, because I think I've given you enough or at least a good head start on how to use the paper pack, because at this point it's getting repetitive because I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> but this is how I would use that paper pack. I think it's fun. I think it's super cute and it's easy to do. And we're using all of the stickers and all of the pieces to just make super fun Christmas cards. So that's all of these with white stitching on them. I think that's super cute. I'm gonna look at these guys and see if I wanna add the white stitching to them. I really don't think so. I kind of like the clean, these look very store-bought to me, these tags. So I'm gonna leave them like they are. And now then, I'm going to put some um, Baker's twine in them. So I'm putting in the little baker's twine and I want to show you what I'm doing. I've taken a piece and I've cut it about 10 inches and I've folded it in half. I'm taking my tweezers, they're reverse tweezers, so I'm sticking them through the hole and opening them up and grabbing that baker's twine and then pulling that through. These tweezers have become the most used thing in my craft room lately because I'm finding new ways to use it to make things easier. So then I'm able to just do my little slip knots. So now I'm going to take my Merry Christmas stamp set, again from that same stamp set I've been using. This is the smaller one. And I'm gonna put it at the bottom of my tag. And because I don't know where I'm gonna be giving this tag to, who I'm gonna be giving it to, I'm not gonna even put to or from yet because I don't know how I will use it because you know, these could be used as ornaments too because they're pretty sturdy. So you might just wanna give this to someone and maybe write a sweet note or something on the back as an ornament. So I'm gonna wait and see how I will use that, but I am gonna stamp on all of them, Merry Christmas. So now let's have a look through of everything we've made so far. So we've made four six by six cards. I'm afraid they're not quite dry, so I'm just gonna show you and then lay them back down so they can keep drying. So four six by six, we've made seven A2 size cards. Aren't they just precious? I love how these turned out. So there's seven of those. Then we made, how many of these were there? I forget now. One, two, three, four, five, six five by seven cards already and then we made one two three four five six seven eight tags and we can make so many more of these but I'm gonna stop at this the reason is I pretty much have showed you everything that I would use them for except for that little game I'm gonna show you and that is using this one other piece of paper and this one I'm gonna do for tomorrow's video for Saturday but I think I gave you a good head start with that paper pad. So I will now show you what all's left from that paper pad. Now I think you guys are gonna be shocked because we just barely scratched the surface, okay? We still have all of these stickers left. We still have these stickers left, which is almost the whole page. All of these guys are left. You could just keep making tags and cards for days. Then we have all of this paper. I cut two pieces of that away earlier all of these little scraps, which can be used for so much because they're not tiny. We have all of these strips. Even though I used them on those other tags, we still have all of those left. Here's some more, here's some more. We have all of these good size pieces. So all of this is still left from the paper pack. This is why I love these paper packs that come themed like this. It just gives you so much to use. I have one piece I didn't cut into. How about that? And I love this piece. I'm sure I'll find a way to use it. So like I said, I'm gonna stop there because I think you can keep going with all the things I showed you and just keep making cards out of this. And some of you might be wondering, but what do I do with the rest of this paper to turn it into a card? The same thing. You pick your paper, you put it on a card front, maybe use a sentiment you have from a stamp set. Maybe you've got some dimensional stickers or things in your stash you could start adding to it. But oh my goodness, there's so much inspiration out there on YouTube for making cards that I think you'll be able to find a way to do that. But even if not, today, you already, if you follow me this far, have all of those tags and all of those cards made. All right, so that's where we're going to stop. If I don't, we'll have like three more videos, I'm afraid. So we're going to have to call it somewhere. Um, watch for tomorrow because I want to show you how we're going to use. Oh, well, we had two whole pages left because we also had this page left. I'm so excited to do this. I cannot wait to do it. See you Saturday to learn how to do that one. And 
until then thanks for watching guys if you get this paperback and you make these cards or any like them or tags share it with us over on our facebook group which is may may made it and so did i we love to see it and i love to see how you guys can take the same ideas and put your twist on it because it's such good inspiration thanks so much for watching talk to you soon Bye bye